All right, this is uh, we're in the Battle of Tannenberg, and um, so in this battle, the Russians were invading East Germany. So um, they knew they had intel that there was a German army uh, about in this area, and so they decided to send half their fleet uh, to the south and try to cut the uh, like pincer move them almost. And when that happened, uh, the Germans realized, and they said, "We're going to take a third of our fleet around the railroad, real slow like, down over here." And then before they could even attack, we brought half of our army down to start fighting them and then took the railroad guys and cut them off completely. So then, um, this ended up in the Russian, like they lost so many men and it was like a complete failure for their plan because their army was split and both of them lost. So they just retreated back into Russia. And this is one of the most major battles because this eliminated the threat of that Germany had of a two front war because they basically took out the East entire eastern front they didn't, they didn't really worry about russia after this battle um so they could focus all their attention to the western front to france and britain and um no Ger uh, russian army entered into german land ever ever since this until uh end of world war ii when they defeated germany then but this was that was what that was the, one of the most major contributions so they can divert all their attention to the western front So the Battle of Verdun was the longest battle. It was 10 months long and it covered 10 square miles. The German chief of staff was Erich von Falkenhayn um, and it was a battle of attrition. So Verdun is 150 miles east of Paris. Um, it's next to the Meuse River and it's a garrison town because it's supported by hills and a double ring of French forts. Um, it was an important stronghold of the east border of France, but they thought it was an unlikely target, so they unarmed it of men and weapons. So, uh, one million German troops came from northeast Verdun. Uh, and Germans launched a massive artillery bombardment on the French front line on February 21st, 1916, which forced the French to retreat. The newly appointed Philippe Pétain um, insisted that there would be no more French retreats. He also ordered additional troops and ammunition to be sent to Verdun. And German advance was halted for a few weeks. Uh, the Germans captured Pont 304 and the French held on to Mort Homme until the Germans captured it in a costly battle in May. On July 7th, uh, Germany captured Fort Vaux even after a great deal of French resistance. Uh, some of the German line was diverted, uh, which allowed the French to attack, um, forcing the Germans to retreat. The French continued to gain land for six weeks, and on December 11th and 13th, the French made a significant push, forcing the Germans to retreat completely. Battle of Jutland, May 31st to June 1st, 1916 took place in the North Sea in between England and Denmark, the Jutland Peninsula. It started about four o'clock, German and English uh, scouts started seeing each other and then they took, they started fighting really far away. It was about, uh, I guess, 15,000 yards. And then, so they're fighting into the night and they were losing, but this guy, Admiral, Jell Jellico Jell Jellico, he said, "You know what? It's getting dark," and so he went up here and led the Germans to the main British Navy, taking the Germans with him. And then once they realized that, it was like, "Man, we're super outnumbered," but they escaped with a complete 180 and retreated back home. So really, they're outnumbered, but both of them claimed it as a victory because they retreated. The Battle of Somme took place on July 1918. The offense was a joint Fr French and British attack. The French and British would um, bombard the German first line, enabling the attacking British troops to practically walk across no man's land and take possession of the German front. The French were going to hold down the, the front line of the British and the French while the, um, and they were going to attack. Germany first line and once they did that British was going to go and run across no man's land and attack the Germans first line but 
The advanced artillery bombardment failed to destroy either the German front line, barbed wire, or the heavy build concrete bunkers the Germans hid during the bombardment. bombardment. Many of the French forces died. Uh, many of the British forces died when they entered the no man's land. From July to September, there was a major, major stalemate. Uh, the Britons ended up using tanks for the first time on September 15th. On November 18th, uh, French and British gained 12 kilometers. All right, the Hundred Days Offensive. Um, this was basically the last offensive, major offensive by the Al Allied powers to try to end the war. So Germany was really close to Paris, and they were about to like almost take the entire take the capital of France. So then, in the Battle of the Amiens, the Allied forces, which were the British, French, the Canadians helped. A lot of countries involved. They surprise attacked the Germans at their camp, and they basically won a major battle. The Battle of Amiens, which which was the start of the Hundred Days Offensive, so it pushed them back to the Hindenburg Line, which was Germans like lying along uh, right here, the northeast part of France. Um, right here, they held pretty strong. The Germans held there for a long time, um, but then uh, in the Battle of Saint Quentin and Cambrai, there was a bunch of battles here. They they broke the line, and the Germans had to fall back, um, almost near close to the German French border. And then there was a bunch of skirmishes going on still, and but this the Allied powers had a lot of momentum, so they were winning a lot of battles. And then finally in the Masseuse Argonne, that was a final little offensive that the Allied powers had. General John J. Pershing he pushed the Germans back even more, and this after this battle, the German government uh, sent the British government armistice of ceasefire, and they they basically German government said that they wanted unconditional surrender to the Germans. This ended the war and ended World War One.